But tonight, just three regular season games are left on the high school football schedule in Virginia. Scott, if you want to make the playoffs, now's the time to make the push. Natalie, this is where you start to see the separation from yeah. the contenders to the pretenders. Okay, let's roll the video quickly here. It's Langley taking on Yorktown. Langley strikes first. That is a touchdown. The Saxons go up early after a fumble by Yorktown on the first possession. Look at this. Langley scores again. It is 14-0 Saxons. Oh, Otto, the Saxons pumped up, but finally Yorktown wakes up. Look at this play action fake on the money. That is a big gainer for the Patriots. Fourth down now for Yorktown, and you know what? They convert. Look at this throwback. Touchdown. The Patriots score, but that was one of the few highlights of the game because it wasn't close. Langley blows out Yorktown. 48 to 14. All right, let's move on now. Meantime, the Spartans hosted the Wolverines, and I'm not talking about Michigan, Michigan State, but still a rivalry nonetheless over in West Springfield. Let's move things along. Quarterback Scott Lewis play action, keeps it himself for the Spartans, and they draw first blood at 7 0. West Springfield, though, they're able to claw back. Former Toyota Athlete of the Week, quarterback Dominic Sanchez, nifty spiral here to Grant Maloney. He drags the defender but gets stopped short of the end zone. No problem. Here Sanchez again takes it himself, spins across that goal line for the score, but tonight the Spartans had more answers. Lewis finds Anthony Bello. He charges into the end zone for six. West Springfield goes on to win 42 to 12. Let's go to Fairfax, Virginia now. C.G. Woodson, those student sections, they were having fun holding the boom box. I'm surprised kids these days still know what that is, Scott. They were firing up the Cavaliers, but it's all Robinson. Nice Jackson Scaparato, pretty pass to Keegan Zalstra for the touchdown. Rams up big. Of course, those Robinson cheerleaders, they are loving it. Now, just before the half, Rams are not done. Scaparato again, finding Daniel Scaparato in the flat. Nice stiff arm right there on the first defender. Ooh. Shakes off the second, and he could go all the way. Oh, yes, he does. Rams up 35-0 at halftime. Robinson rolls 49-0, the final score. I love those helmets, by the way. Let's go to McLean High School. The Highlanders battling Herndon late in the second quarter. McLean and Black losing 15 to nothing. This doesn't help. Quarterback Christian McNeil gets swallowed up by Khalil Gibby Goulet. The Highlanders going into the breakdown, two touchdowns. First drive of the second half, not any better. Nice job here by Herndon's Daquan Hogan, staying home and getting the tackle for a loss. Here the Hornets face with a fourth and long. They go with a running play, and it works perfectly. David Castillo taken down inside the 10. Very next play, Castillo gets popped pretty good, but still Whoa. finds the end zone. Herndon blanks McLean 30 to zero. And we're just getting started here on 7 News on your sideline. We're going to take you to Montgomery County. Oh, yeah, one of my favorite matchups of the night. I was there on the sideline checking out the private school clash, Georgetown Prep hosting St. Albans. We'll let you know if the little Hoyas were able to protect home turf. 7 News on your sideline rolls on. Welcome back to 7 News on your sideline. Over the last couple of weeks, the private school matchups have been heating up. Oh, yeah. Tonight, another good game between Georgetown Prep and St. Albans. Oh, yeah. And Scott, this has been a uh, series that's been one-sided recently. Yeah. Over the last several years, the Little Hoyas have dominated the Bulldogs. Well, this season, though, the tide might be turning a bit. 5-1 and one St. Albans coming into tonight's game with plenty of confidence and momentum. It was a beautiful night for football out in Bethesda, Maryland. The dogs looking to continue that dominance while well, they get right to work. Brett Poxtis looking for the end zone and he connects with Lacey nice Rice. Call. What a play to set the tone. The Bulldogs strike first. And well, spoiler alert, they were not finished. Still up seven. Christian there you go. There you go. Christian Sherillis takes the handoff, wraps around the outside and in for another Bulldog score. It's 14 nothing now, but the little Hoyas, they get the last laugh. Jafia Rousen, the bulldozer, he muscles his way across the goal line to get G prep on the board, and that's the spark they needed because they go on to win 25 to 20. That is a big win for the Hoyas. All right, WCAC showdown. DeMatha hosting good counsel second half. Falcons quarterback Brady Cox, the freshman, making an ill-advised pass and is picked off by DeMatha's Noah Chambers. 
And we're going the other way. Smooth sailing, pick six for the Stags. Good counsel gets it back and drives down the field, and Joe Williams caps off the drive with this touchdown. Falcons trying to make a game of it. Stags head coach Bill McGregor talking to his guys. It did the trick. QB Denzel Gardner sees something he likes, connecting with LeVar Keys. Out Stags in business. Couple plays later, Bud Coombs bullies his way into the end zone. Damatha wins big, 35 to seven. Another private school matchup, St. Stephen's and St. Agnes taking on Landon. The Bears strike first. Former athlete of the week, Sean Murray, calling his own number on the RPO, a five yard touchdown, quickly seven zip Landon. Saints trying to respond with a defensive play. Check out defensive end senior Patrick Thomas. His hit jars the ball loose and it gets recovered by the Saints. Tables turning a bit. But on the very next play, quarterback Henry Forsman drops back. His pass is tipped and is picked off by Logan Cassidy. The senior takes it all the way back for a pick six. Later, everything rolling Landon's way. Matthew Rosner gets the handoff and gets in for a score. Landon wins big, 49 to 28. All right, let's head over to Landover. Bethesda Chevy Chase hosting Blair, and those both cheer squads were linking up. How cool is that? Blair on top, 12-7 at the half, and adding to it in the third, Dylan Rinaldi hits Jaden Parker in stride. Touchdown Blazers. Fourth quarter now, BCC threatening. Danny Hahn, quarterback keeper, waiting for the refs to give him that signal. And it's a touchdown. The Barons keeping Ooh. things close. But next possession, ch check this out. Blair with some trickery. It looks like they're punting nice. on fourth down. Instead, it's a fake punt. Tegan Willis picks up the first down to keep that possession alive. So later on, same possession. Blazers extending their lead by three. Willis's kick is good. Blair goes on to win a close one, 24 to 17. I'm liking that fake punt. And we're not oh. done just yet. There was another big showdown tonight in Montgomery County. Oh, yeah. Northwest and Churchill battling under those bright Friday night lights. We will tell you which team picked up the win straight ahead. 7 News on your sideline continues next. Seven news on your sideline rolling on here. The Northwest High School football team has allowed only seven points all season long. That lone touchdown happened last week against Paint Branch, and it was also their first loss of the year. Natalie, the Jaguars are mad. Really, <laughs> really mad. Undefeated no more. They tried to get back in the win column tonight against a very tough Churchill team, and they were having a pink out tonight in Germantown. Pick it up in the second half. Churchill was down. 21 zip, but trying to rally. Vasi Hallis back to pass and hits James Sneed. The senior receiver scores. Later, this time Hallis keeps it himself, finds some room, and he's not going to get stopped. Looking like a young Scott Abraham and Pop <laughs> Warner rumbling in for the score. Last drive of the game now. Churchill trying to complete the comeback. But Anthony Gengarella breaks up the pass. That's a ball game. Northwest survives Churchill 21 to 20 the final. What a game. All right, in Gaithersburg, the Trojans hosting the Seneca Valley Screaming Eagles. First half, Max Young takes the snap for the Eagles, rolls out and lets it fly. Amir Matt coming down nice with pass. it and runs away from everyone for the touchdown. Seneca Valley takes the 7 0 lead. Now the Eagles cruise after that, shutting out Gaithersburg 19 to nothing. Good for them, it's a big win. All right, let's go to Prince George's County. Homecoming at Largo, hosting Friendly. The Patriots going through the air. Dominique Jackson. Dropping back, good protection, and he goes deep, connecting with Joel Danqua wow. for the touchdown. Friendly leads eight zip, and they are fired up. Back come the Lions. Time and Fox, the workhorse back for Largo. Pounds it in from three yards out. Two-point conversion is good, and the game is tied at eight. Friendly really found something in that Largo secondary. Jackson again. Dropping back and tosses it deep towards the corner of the end zone. And Nigel Trice coming down Ooh. with it. That was pretty. Oh, this James. is a great game. Largo wins a close one, 30-26. to 26. So another great Friday night in the books. A lot of great touchdowns. Yeah. Passing, catching. Well done, everybody. And uh, can't wait till next week. All right. Sounds good. Well, thank you so much for joining us tonight for 7 News at 11 and 7 News on your sideline. Jimmy Kim Alive is next. Have a great night.